Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from The Loopy Lamb and TheLoopyLamb.com and thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. It's week four of the 2023 Amigurumi Advent Calendar Crochet Along and for this week's project, we're going to be starting our wardrobe for our dolls by crocheting these really adorable Amigurumi overall shorts. My favorite part about this project, besides the fact that it's quick and easy to crochet, is that it has this fun and functional little pocket on the front bib. So without further ado, let's hop into what materials we're going to need in order to crochet our amigurumi overall shorts. All right, and welcome back to another week of the Amigurumi Advent Calendar Crochet Along here in 2023. And this week we are going to be making some overall shorts for our Advent Adam dolls. To follow along with today's tutorial, you're going to need a worsted weight yarn in your color of preference. I'm using We Crochet's Bravo Worsted Weight Yarn. It is my favorite acrylic yarn to use for Amigurumi. So I'll be using that, and this is the color dove heather and uh, the color that i've used for my original sample here is the color denim you're going to need a three and a half millimeter or e crochet hook or whatever hook size you've been using for all of the other patterns in the crochet along thus far that you've been using to match the gauge in the pattern you'll also need a tapestry needle three at least three stitch markers if you have four that could also be helpful but i like to use three a pair of scissors a uh, coordinating colored sewing thread and needle sewing needle and you're going to need two of these nine millimeter buttons now this is just a card of buttons that i got from walmart but you there's also a lot of options available at amazon and i have uh, linked to that in the material list that you can find on the blog and i've included a link to that in the description box below for you so if you're ready to get started, hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. I am going to clear my workspace here and get ready to get started on creating our overalls. All right, so we're ready to start with the overalls. Our overalls are worked from the bottom up, meaning we're going to start with each pant leg and work our way to the top of the overalls. We're going to be using um, whatever color you've got here for worsted weight yarn, and we're going to need to create a slip knot in order to start. To create a slip knot, you're going to hold the tail end of your yarn in your hand like so. Grab the working end of your yarn and you're going to wrap it around your fingers and then cross it over itself like this to create an X. Then flip your hand over, and then this is the working yarn, and I'm gonna pin it down with my ring finger here. Then I'm going to grab my crochet hook, insert it under the first strand, over the second, and then I'm going to use my hook to pull this second strand out and under the first strand. Then I'm going to maintain tension with my hook and just pull all of the yarn off of my fingers and transfer it to the hook. I'm going to grab both the ends that are in my hand and pull that tight. And then I'm going to grab the working yarn and your hook should, or your yarn should glide up to the hook and tightening up that slip knot. You don't want it to be too tight. You need to have some movement here in your yarn. And now we are ready to start with the first row of our pant leg. To uh, start with our pant leg, we're going to do a chain of 20. To do our chain, we're going to yarn over and pull through the loop. That's one. And then we're going to yarn over and pull through that loop again. And that's two. And we're going to continue to do this until we have 20. So again, yarn over, pull through. There's three. Yarn over, pull through. There's four. Yarn over, pull through, and there's five. So I'm going to continue to do this until I have 20 chains. So now that I have my 20 chains, I need to join the last chain to the first chain with a slip stitch, but I wanna make sure that I'm not twisting my chain. So I like to hold my chain out flat like this so I can see the V's and then I'm going to turn it onto its back so I can see the little bumps on the back and they're facing me. Then I'm just going to fold the piece in half. If you need to place your finger in the center point of the chain and then fold it 
in half. Just get that tail out of there. So now the front side of the chain is facing you on top and now you know that your chain is not twisted. You're going to insert your hook into that first chain and you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Then you're going to pull that loop that you just pulled up through the loop that was existing on your hook like this and that is your slip stitch join okay and your your chain should look like this you should not have any twists in it if you have any twists you're going to need to do that again because you don't want to have um, like an infinity type scarf situation happening with a pant leg so now that we've got our join um, done we're going to um, chain up one so that's yarn over and pull through a loop and that's your chain one and we're going to work one single crochet into each chain around now I like to bring in my stitch marker at this point you don't have to do this but this is something that helps me and I know it has helped some others as well when you join with the slip stitch it can be really tricky when you're working in it in all a single color to figure out where's the first stitch, where's the last stitch, and which is the slip stitch, because they all tend to sometimes just look the same. So, uh, especially once you throw a chain in there. So what I like to do is I like to take my slip, or my uh, stitch marker here, and I like to place it in my last chain, or later I'll put it in my last stitch. So that way I know where the last stitch is, so I don't pick up or maybe lose any stitches as I'm crocheting right it takes an extra second to put it in there however it, it can save you time later um, in frogging and frogging if you're not familiar with that term means you know ripping your part your project apart and having to do it again so we're going to work round one and as I said we're going to work one single crochet into each chain around so we're going to insert our hook into the first chain here and you can feel free to crochet over your tail if you'd like, so you don't have to weave that in later. Sorry, there we go. Into the chain, we're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. There's two loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops, and that's your first single crochet completed. So working into the next chain here, you've got these Vs facing you. You're going to insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over hook, and pull up a loop. You've got two loops on your hook, then you're going to yarn over and pull through two. And we're going to do this in each chain across. At the end of this round, you should have 20 single crochets. And at the end, I'll show you how to count those stitches. If you'd like to pause your video now and do one single crochet into each chain across, I'll meet you here at the end of the round. So I just finished my last stitch of round one and I have 20 single crochet stitches. If you want to count your stitches and I recommend that you do at the end of every round, you should take a look at the top of your stitches where you see the V's and you would count each V around. And if you have 20 stitches, then you are good to go. The slip stitch that we do to join each round does not count as a stitch. So I'm going to uh, join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch and so I'm going to insert my hook into that first stitch there yarn over and pull up a loop and then I'm going to pull that loop through the loop on my hook and that is my slip stitch completed so then I'm going to chain up one and before I turn I'm going to place my stitch marker into the first stitch of the round here so that way, again, I'm going to pick up any stitches and I'm not going to lose any because I know where to end. So now I'm going to turn my work and I'm ready to do round two. Now rounds two through four are all done the same way. We're going to place one single crochet into each stitch around. We're always going to have 20 stitches at the end of each round. There should be uh, no changes in your stitch count. So we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch, yarn over and pull up the loop insert in, uh, yarn over and pull through both loops and that's your first single crochet completed and we'll do that again insert into the next stitch yarn over and pull up a loop then we'll yarn over and pull through two and that's our second single crochet completed if you'd like to pause your video and do one single crochet into each stitch around i'll meet you here at the end of the round and show you how we're going to uh, finish this round before moving on to round three 
So I just finished my last stitch of round two. I've moved my stitch marker out of the way and I'm ready to join my last stitch to my first stitch with the slip stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then I'm going to pull that loop through the loop that's already existing on my hook. And that's my join. Now for rounds three and four, we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did there for round two. I'm going to put my stitch marker into my first stitch here chain up one and turn my work. Then I'm going to work one single crochet into each stitch around and then we join the last stitch to the first stitch as we just did here in round two. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds three and four, placing one single crochet into each stitch around, I'll meet you back here at the end of round four and show you how we're going to uh, proceed next. So I just finished my last stitch of round four and I'm going to join my last stitch with to my first stitch with a slip stitch, inserting into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then pulling that loop through the loop on my hook. And now at this point we can cut our yarn and uh, I leave a tail of about four to six inches, cut our yarn and then pull the yarn all the way through this stitch. Now you're going to need to create a second pant leg. So uh, please rewind the video and watch the instructions for pant leg one. But at, when you get to the end of round four, do not finish off. I'll meet you back here at the end of round four when you're finished pant leg two. And I'll show you how we're going to join our pant legs to create our shorts. So I'll meet you back here in just a moment. All right, so I just finished my second pant leg and I'm ready to join my pant legs together. So uh, moving on, we're in round five here, we're going to chain two. So we're going to yarn over and pull through the loop, yarn over and pull through the loop again, and there is our chain two. Now we're going to turn our work, and then we're going to grab our first pant leg. Now we're going to uh, single crochet into the last stitch of round four. So the last stitch of round four is right here, if you left, goodness, is right here. If you left your stitch marker in for either first or last round, that can be a little helpful. Um, but ideally just the, um, you can see the little slip stitch here. And if you have your tail left in there, um, that also is a good indicator. So we're just going to the last stitch here of round four of the other pant leg and doing one single crochet. Now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the uh, stitches here in the top of round four of the first pant leg here. But before we move on, I wanna put a stitch marker here into chain two that we just created. So I'm placing that stitch marker in chain two here, All right? Because that's gonna be important later on. So again, we're working one single crochet into each stitch around of pant leg one. That's the pant leg we just joined to. And because we've already done one single crochet in this round, we're doing 19 more. So each stitch is worked around. So I just worked my last stitch around the top of pant leg one and we have our second pant leg here that we're going to work into. Let me just get these tails out of the way here. Make it easier to see. All right, so we are at the point where the chain join between our pant legs because we've worked all the way around the first pant leg. And now we're going to place one single crochet into each of the next two chains. So I like to um, turn the chain so I can see what I'm, see the Vs. And it can be a little tricky here to work your, um, your stitches into. But, um, so I see the Vs and I know that I want to work into this side of the chain. I'm actually gonna move that stitch marker out of the way. And I like to grab the um, strand closest to me in the chain by going underneath 
the chain and picking it up with the tip of the hook here instead of the end because that's just for me that's just a little simpler so then I'm going to single crochet once into that chain and then I'm going to place that stitch marker back into the chain on the other side then I'm going to single crochet once into the next chain And now that those are worked, we're ready to work into the tops of the second pant leg. So now we're going to single crochet once into uh, each of the uh, 20 stitches around the top of the pant leg here. So we're going to work in here. And then we're single crochet once all the way around the pant leg. So I just finished doing my 20 single crochets around the top of this second pant leg here and I'm back to my chain join in the front here and I'm going to work one single crochet into the first chain. And that's our last stitch of the round. I like to take a, a moment at this point to count all my stitches around and we're going to count the chain one of the uh, first two chains as a stitch. So we want to make sure that we're counting all the way around and that we have 44 stitches. Okay, so because we need to have that number of stitches in order to continue moving forward. So I'm going to pause my video. I'm going to count my 44 stitches, make sure we haven't picked up or dropped any, and then we're moving on to round six. So I have counted my stitches and I have my 44 and I'm ready to move on to before I move on I want to join my last stitch to the chain with a slip stitch. Now this marked chain does count as a stitch so make sure that you when you're doing your count that you're counting that as a stitch. So I'm just going to insert my hook into that marked chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, then I'm going to pull that loop through the loop on my hook and I'm moving on now to round six. I'm gonna yarn over and chain up one and turn my work. And I'm going to work one single crochet into each stitch and chain around. So I'm going to work one single crochet in all of the stitches. And then because we have that uh, March stitch here as a chain, we also are placing one single crochet into that chain. We should still have 44 stitches at the end of this round. And we will be joining our last stitch to our first stitch with a slip stitch at the end. So if you'd like to pause your video and do one single crochet into each stitch around, I'll meet you back here at the end of round six. So I just finished my last stitch of round six and I'm going to do my join now. I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop on my hook to do my join. Then I'm going to yarn over and chain one and turn my work. And as I've said before, I'm going to place my stitch marker into the last stitch of my round. So that way I'm not uh, picking up or dropping any extra or losing stitches. So for rounds seven through 10, we're just going to be doing the same thing. We're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around and we're joining at the end of each round, just like we did here in round six. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds seven through 10, working one single crochet into each stitch around and joining at the end, I'll meet you back here at the end of round 10 and show you how we'll be moving on to round 11. So I just finished my last stitch of round 10 and I'm just joining my last stitch to my first stitch with my slip stitch and I'm chaining up one. I'm going to place my stitch marker into the first stitch of the round here and turn my work. Now we're moving on to round 11. We're going to work one single crochet into each of the first six stitches. So we're working our first here. Three, and six. So there's our first six single crochets. Now we're going to do a single crochet decrease. 
Now we just do a basic single crochet decrease. We're not going to try to do an invisible decrease or anything like that because uh, we need it to, we want it to show properly on the fabric. So we're just going to insert in our hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook and we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. Now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And three. And now we're going to do another single crochet decrease. Insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And that's your single crochet decrease completed. Now we're going to place one single crochet into each of the next 16 stitches. There's one. There's four. Eight, twelve, and six, oops, sixteen. Now we're going to do another single crochet decrease, and again we're working into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now we're going to do one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. There's one and three. Now we're going to do another single crochet decrease. Again, we're insert into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Now we're going to do a uh, one single crochet into each of the remaining eight stitches. Oops. And here's eight. I'm just going to get rid of my stitch marker here. And now I'm going to join my last stitch to my first stitch with a slip stitch. And I'm going to place that stitch marker back into that first stitch. At the end of round 11, you should have 40 stitches around. Again, we don't count our slip stitches as a stitch in our stitch count. So for rounds 12 through 16, we're going to do the same thing we did for round 7 through 10. We're going to chain up one, turn our work, and work one single crochet into each stitch around, joining with a slip stitch at the end of each round. So if you'd like to do rounds 12 through 16 and uh, meet me back here when you're finished that, I'll show you how we're going to finish those off and start working on the bib of our overall shorts. So I just finished the last stitch of round 16 and I'm just going to join my last stitch here to my first stitch with a slip stitch. Then I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving a tail of at least four to six inches. And then I'm gonna pull that yarn tail all the way through my last stitch. Now I'm going to need my stitch markers. I'm gonna to need to have at least two here because I need to mark a few stitches in this round. So I need to mark stitch four and 24 of round 16. So if this is my first stitch here, I'm going to count over four, one, two, three, and four, and then I'm going to place a stitch marker into that stitch. And then I need to find stitch 24. So if this is marked stitches four, I need to count over 20 more. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Then I'm going to place my stitch marker here into stitch 24. 
And this is what your project should look like at this point. Now, these two stitch markers are important that we get them in the right place because that's where we're going to be starting our, uh, our bib for our overalls. So I'm going to grab my hook and my yarn and we're ready to move on to creating the bib. We're going to start with the front bib and we want to have the right side of our fabric facing us. That means you should have the stitch marker in stitch 24 here on your right hand side. And um, this, your, I mean, the fabric's reversible. So your stitch marker in stitch 24 is the best indicator of the right side here. So we are going to attach our yarn to stitch 24 with a single crochet join. To do a single crochet join, we're going to use our yarn to create a slip knot. Just like we covered in the beginning, we're going to take our tail end of our yarn, pin it down, wrap it around our fingers, and then cross it over itself to create an X like this. Then we're gonna flip our hand over. This is the working yarn and it's being pinned down between my middle finger and my ring finger going to take my hook and go under the first strand and over the first strand. Then I'm going to use my hook to pull that first strand out and under the first strand and then I'm going to pull all of the yarn off of my fingers transferring it to the hook. Then I'm going to pull up on my hook and pull on the tails at the same time which will tighten my slip knot. Then I'm going to grab the working yarn and give that a tug and that's going to bring my slip knot up to my hook and I'm ready to go. So to do a single crochet joint, we, essentially why we do this is to eliminate the slip stitch and the chain one of a normal join. A normal join, uh, when you're adding a new yarn like this, you do a slip stitch and then chain one and then single crochet all in the same chain. And it can be a little bulky. So we're going to do this single crochet join, which eliminates all of that. And we're just going to go straight into doing our single crochet. So we've got our slip knot on our hook already, and we're going to insert our hook into that 24th stitch. This is our marked stitch here and I'm going to move that stitch marker out of the way so y'all can see what we're doing. So now that I've got my slip knot on my hook I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop and we now have two loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops and that's our first stitch and that's a single crochet and it's a nice clean join. So now we are going to work one single crochet into each of the next eight stitches. So working into the next stitch and I'm going to just crochet over my tail here while we're working. We're going to single crochet. This is the first round of the front bib. At the end you should have nine single crochets and that's including your single crochet join because that does count as a stitch. So now we're going to uh, chain up one and turn our work. We're going to be working back and forth in turned rows. So we're always going to chain up one and turn our work. And for rows two through nine, we're doing this, these rows the same way. We're chaining up one, turning our work. And then we're going to place one single crochet into each stitch across. So working into the first stitch here, we're single crochet and then one in each stitch across. And don't forget to single crochet into that single crochet join there at the end. So now we have our nine single crochets. We're chaining up one and turning our work. And now we can do rows three through nine in the same way. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows three through nine, working one single crochet into each stitch across, I'll meet you back here at the end of row nine and show you how we're going to finish off. So I just finished my last stitch of row nine and I'm ready to finish off. So I'm going to cut a tail of about four to six inches in my yarn. And then I'm going to chain up one and pull that loop through the loop on my hook and pull that tight. If you want, you can just pull that all the way through. I, at this point, just like to have uh, the security here 
of having that little chain one holding the yarn in place. So now we're ready to start with the back bib. So we're going to turn our piece over and we're going to find the marked stitch here on the back. That should be stitch four of round 16. So we're going to do another single crochet join. So again with the slip knot we're going to hold on to the tail, wrap it around our fingers like so, pin it down and then insert our hook under the first over the second and then transfer all the yarn onto the hook and tighten that up. So now that we have our slip knot on our hook we're going to insert our hook into the marked stitch here. I'll move my stitch marker out of the way. And now we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. We should have two loops on your hook then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. So now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next eight stitches. Now because we're on the back here we want to make sure that we're not adding any stitches here because we've got that slip stitch join in the middle. So just make sure that you're not adding any stitches like extra or you're not crocheting into a slip stitch. You want to work into the first stitch of the round and the last stitch of round 16 and just skip that section all together. And I'll show you how we're doing that. I'm going to crochet over my tails as we go. We're going to insert into the next stitch and single crochet. I'm crocheting across here. So here's my first stitch of round 16. Then I'm fine. I see my little uh, slip knot there. I'm skipping that and I'm working into the last stitch of round 16. So at this point I have five single crochets and I need three more. Sorry, I need four more because I need nine stitches total. So I'm just going to double check there. I've got nine stitches and that's the end of row one of the back bib. So rows two through nine are the same as we did with the front bib. We're just going to chain up one, turn our work, and work one single crochet into each stitch across. So if you'd like to pause your video and come back to me at the end of uh, row nine of your bib. I will show you how we're going to create the straps for our bib in row 10. So I just finished my last stitch of row nine of the back bib and I'm ready to move on to row 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to do a chain of 18 to create our first strap. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through the loop. Yarn over and pull through and that's two. We're going to continue till we have 18. So now that I have my uh, 18 uh, chains here I'm going to work into the seventh chain from the hook and these skipped chains will create our first buttonhole. So counting over we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to insert my hook into that chain, yarn over and pull up a loop and then I'm going to pull that loop through the loop on my hook to slip stitch and you can see we've created this little loop here and that will be our buttonhole. So we're going to slip stitch into every chain across. So insert into the next yarn over pull up a loop pull that loop through the loop on your hook and we're just going to continue to do that all the way back to the back bib. So now that we are back to the back bib, we've got a slip stitch in every chain we created. We're going to single crochet across the top of row nine of the back bib. So we're just going to place one single crochet into each stitch across. So 
So now that we've reached the opposite corner of the back bib, we're going to create our second strap. So we're going to do that by doing another chain of 18. So yarn over, pull through the loop. There's one, yarn over, pull through, and that's two. And we're going to continue till we have 18. So I'm going to work again in the seventh chain from the hook. So I'm going to count over one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then pull that loop through the loop on my hook to slip stitch. And here is our second buttonhole. So again, we're just like we did with the first strap, but we're just going to slip stitch in every chain that we've created back to the back bib. So now I have created my second strap. I've done a slip stitch in every chain across and now I'm just going to place one slip stitch into the side of the last row here in the back bib. And this is just to secure my strap to the back of the bib. Now I'm going to finish off by cutting my yarn, leaving a tail of about four to six inches. And then I'm going to pull the yarn all the way through that last stitch and I'm going to pull that to tighten. Then I can weave in my ends and I'm going to work on creating a pocket next and then we'll move into creating our buttons. All right, so let me set this aside for just a moment and we'll start with our pocket. To create our pocket, we're going to need to create another slip stitch, or goodness, another slip knot. So we're going to grab our yarn tail, wrap it around our fingers, insert under the first strand over the second and pull that under and pull all the yarn off your fingers and onto the hook. And we're going to tighten that up and we're ready to get started creating our button. To start our button, we're going to create a chain of seven. So we're going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through again, and we're going to continue until we have seven chains. So now that we have our seven chains, we're going to start in the second chain from the hook. Again, we never count the hook, the yarn that's on our hook. We're going to count over two. So there's one and two. And we're going to insert our hook into that chain there. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through two. And that's our first single crochet. We're going to work one single crochet into each chain across. Insert into the next. And single crochet. Insert into the next. And single crochet. We're doing this all the way across our chain. And this is the end of row one of the pocket. You should have six single crochets. So now we're ready to start row two. For rows two through six of the pocket, they're all done the same way. We're going to yarn over and chain up one, turn our work, and work one single crochet into each stitch across. So starting in the first stitch, we're going to single crochet, and then we're just placing one single crochet into the top of each stitch from the previous row. We should not have any changes in stitch count. You should always have six single crochets. So there's our second row. I'm chaining up one and turning my work. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rows three through six um, in the same manner that we just did row two, I'll meet you back here at the end of row six and show you what we're going to be doing with this next. So I'm back and I just finished the last stitch of row six and now I'm going to cut a long tail for sewing this pocket onto the shorts. I like to cut at least 15 inches, maybe a little longer. It's usually overkill, but it's better to have more than enough than to run out. 
So I'm going to yarn over and chain up one to secure my yarn and pull the yarn tail all the way through. Now we're going to pick up our overalls here and we want to find the front bib. It is the one without the straps. And then we're going to use our yarn tail to sew our pocket onto our um, overalls. Now we only want to sew three sides because of course our pocket needs to be functional. So we are going to do that now. Just bear with me a moment. I'm going to pop off screen and I'll be right back and get us started on sewing on our pocket. All right, so we're back. I uh, just wanted to weave in one of the ends on the pocket so before we got started. So I'm going to thread my tapestry needle with the tail of the yarn that's attached to our pocket here. And I like to just center the pocket in the middle of the bib, right? If you want it lower, you can do that. You want it higher, go nuts. Um, I just like to center it as much as possible. And then I'm just going to use my tail to whip stitch the pocket onto the front of the bib. There's no like fancy way I'm going to do this. I'm just going to take my tail, insert it into the bib, and then back out through the bib and into the pocket. And again, we're just going to go through three sides here. We're going through the left side, the bottom and the right side, and we want to leave the top open. I find it easier to um, do this upside down. Now, if you don't want to go over the edge of the fabric, you can by all means um, go um, I forget what the name of the stitch is, but you can um, kind of do a stitch on the inside of the fabric. You don't have to go over the edges like I do. So I just finished showing, sewing on the pocket of my bib. Again, I've gone through only three sides, so the pocket is functional. And at this point, I can um, finish off, weave in my ends, and then I'll be ready to attach my button. So just give me a moment here to weave in my ends and I'll meet you back here to show you how to sew on one of the buttons. So we are ready to sew our buttons onto the front of our bib. I've cut a length of uh, thread here from the sewing thread and I'm threading it onto my needle. Now I want to hold my yarn, or I keep saying yarn, I want to hold my thread double, so I'm going to meet the ends up here and just tie a knot or two into the end. Now my way of tying on, of sewing on a button, that might not be the official way, but it does the job. And if you haven't sewn a button on before, um, you know, it'll get the job done for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the back of my fabric and then I'm going to just, uh, in the top corner here on the opposite side of where I want to place a button, I'm going to use my sewing thread, uh, sewing needle and insert it here. Then I'm going to find the other side of my thread and loop it through between the two strands, the needle. So that way when I'm pulling it tight, I'm going to get a little knot. Right. Then I'm going to bring my needle through the fabric where I want the needle or the button to be placed. And I'm just checking my placement here. And I'm going to bring the needle through the fabric and through the first hole on the button. And I'm bringing the sewing thread all the way through. Second, I cut the tail here. Not a big deal, I'll cut it off. So anyways, I've got the, this, there we go. So I've got my needle and thread th threaded through one of the holes of the button. And I'm going to go into the opposite button hole here and down through the fabric. If I want my, my button to be, 
like place in a certain way. Like I want the buttonholes to be vertical or sorry, horizontal here. And I want them to stay in that place. I need to keep the button in that place as I'm inserting my needle, which is really tricky when you're trying to show a tiny little button on the camera. So I bear, bear with me here, friends. I'm trying my best. So I'm bring my needle through the second hole and down through the bottom. And I'm just going to go back and forth from back to front sewing through the fabric and through the buttonholes on the button in order to secure it. Just gonna do this a few more times. Till I feel like it's secure. All right, now I, I'm going to admit here that I cheat. Instead of cutting my yarn and like, there's a special way to attach a button here and I know how to do it, but I don't do it because it's time consuming and I have to cut my thread a second time. And seriously, who's got time for that? I wanna get these buttons done as quickly as possible with as many, as little cuts as possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my piece over once I'm happy with the placement and how secure that button is. And I'm just gonna take my needle and I am going to thread it through the yarn of the last row here and bring it out to the opposite corner. Don't pull that too tight because watch what it's gonna do with your fabric. You don't want that. So make sure it's uh, nice and loose. You're not pulling that too tight. Then I'm going to grab my second button here place it where I want it in this top corner. Again, I apologize about your ability to see here, but I have to hold the button in place without ideally stabbing myself with this needle. <laughs> All right, so I've got the placement down. I've got my needle through the fabric and I'm putting the needle onto the or the button onto the needle just because it's a little probably easier for you to see at this point. Then I'm pulling the thread through, and then I'm just going to repeat what I did with the first button. I'm gonna go through the buttonhole, the second buttonhole, and back down through the fabric. And then I'm just gonna go back and forth through the back of the fabric, through the buttonholes, multiple times until I am happy with how secure it is. All right, so to finish this off, I'm going to take, I'm on the back side of my fabric here and I wanna come out through the top. So I wanna come out between the button and the fabric with my needle. So you're gonna to have to come out at a bit of an angle. Hopefully I can do this here without stabbing myself. There we go. So we've got the needle, it's coming out through at the base of the button. And what you're gonna do is you're going to hold on to some of the thread and you're going to wrap it around. I like to do it twice, grab it in the middle again. Then you're gonna go down through the little loop you created, down through the base at the needle, or the base of the button here with your needle and out through the back. I almost always stab myself during this point, so please be careful. Yep, there you go, stab myself. All right, cool. So we wanna make sure we're going through the loop and through at the base of the button. We're going to pull that tight. Hold on to your loops because we want them to tighten up. And that second one, there we go. We're gonna pull those tight. And so what that's done, it's created a little knot at the back of our button here. I have some extra thread happening back here, which is okay. Okay, so I pulled it tight and now it's created a little knot on the, underneath the button and so it should be secure. 
you can see that I have a little extra loop where I had missed um, pulling that yarn tight, but that's totally fine because I'm going to cut it and it's not going to go anywhere. If you would feel better um, before cutting it, you can weave your ends in here and just like you would your yarn and then cut it. Um, I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. So I'm just going to cut all of the thread on the back. And voila, we have some sewn on buttons. So then when you're putting this onto your doll, you would just use the buttonholes we created in our little strap to place it over the buttons and then secure your strap onto your doll. And that's it. That's how you make these really adorable doll overalls. If you found this help video helpful, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. If you like free crochet patterns, please check out the blog, theloopylamb.com for all my free crochet patterns. And um, thank you so much for watching. Happy hooking and I'll see you next time.